स्टैंडर्ड सेवेंथ इंग्लिश मीडियम सब्जेक्ट हिस्ट्री लेसन नंबर सेवन द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ स्वराज शिवाजी महाराज फाउंडेड स्वराज ही हैड हिमसेल्फ क्राउंड आफ्टर द करोनेशन महाराज एकम्प्लिश्ड दक्षिण दिग्विजय द कॉन्क्वेस्ट ऑफ द साउथ द स्वराज एक्सपांडेड कंप्राइजिंग लार्ज एरियाज ऑफ नाशिक पुणे सातारा सांगली कोल्हापूर सिंधुदुर्ग रत्नागिरी रायगड एंड ठाणे डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र इट ऑल्सो इन्क्लूडेड पार्ट्स ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश एंड तमिळनाडू स्टेट्स टू एन्शुअर द स्मूथ मॅनेजमेंट ऑफ द अफेअर्स ऑफ द स्वराज एंड टू एन्शुअर पीपल्स वेलफेअर शिवाजी महाराज सेट अप एन एफिशियंट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वी शेल गेट सम इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट इट इन दिस चॅप्टर अष्ट प्रधान मंडळ काउन्सिल ऑफ एट मिनिस्टर्स एट द टाइम ऑफ इस करोनेशन शिवाजी महाराज अपॉइंटेड काउन्सिल ऑफ एट मिनिस्टर्स द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वॉज डिव्हायडेड इन टू एट डिपार्टमेंट्स A head was appointed for each department. These eight heads of department constituted the Ashta Pradhan Mandal. Maharaj alone had the power to appoint a minister or to remove him from his position. The ministers were answerable to Maharaj for the administration of their respective departments. Shivaji Maharaj selected the council on the basis of their merit and achievements. He did not give them chargers, vatans or gifts or fees. They were paid handsome salaries instead. The policy regarding agriculture. Agriculture was the main occupation in villages. Maharaj knew the importance of agriculture. That was why he paid attention to the welfare of farmers. He entrusted the responsibility of organizing the land revenue system to his capable and experienced office bearer Annaji Dattu. He warned the officers that they should not collect more revenue than the amount that was fixed. He encouraged peasants to bring uncultivated land under cultivation. if the crop was lost due to excessive rains or drought or if an enemy army has devastated the area of the village remissions were granted in land revenue and other taxes maharaj has instructed his officers to provide peasants with bullocks plows and good seeds for sowing village economy of that period Agriculture was the backbone of the rural economy. In villages, many occupations developed to supplement agriculture. Artisans in the village produced goods and fulfilled the needs of the local people. In this sense, a village was a self-sufficient unit. Farmers gave a definite share from their produce to artisans. This share was called baluta trade and business Maharaj knew that a kingdom does not prosper without an increase in trade Merchants bring novel goods as also certain necessities into the kingdom Goods become available in plenty Trade prospers adding to wealth The view that Maharaj took of merchants is seen in the Ajaya Patra where merchants are described as follows Merchants are the ornaments of the kingdom and the glory of the king It was the policy of the Maharaj to protect industries An excellent example of this is the salt industry He protected the salt industry in Kokan At that time traders imported salt from the Portuguese territory and sold in Swaraj that affected the local trade in Kokan areas 
So, Maharaj charged heavy duty on the salt imported into Swaraj from the Portuguese territory. The intention was that the salt imported from the Portuguese territory would then cost more and as a result, its import would decrease and the sale of the local salt would increase. The Military Organization There were two main divisions of the army of Shivaji Maharaj. Infantry and Cavalry In the infantry, there were officers such as Hawaldar, Jumledar, etc. The chief of the infantry was called Sarnobad. He was the highest officer in the infantry. In the cavalry, there were two types of cavalrymen, namely Shiledars and Barkevs. The Shiledar had his own horse and weapons. The Barkev was provided with a horse and weapons by the state. In the cavalry, Barkevs were more in number. The ranks of the cavalry officers were similar to those of the infantry officers. The highest officer in the cavalry was the Sarnobat. Netaji Palkar, Pratap Rao Guzar, Hambir Rao Mohite were some of the famous Sarnobats of the cavalry. 